So you're trading on Betfair, and one of the questions that people always ask me is, are the markets easier to trade than they were 10, 20 years ago? Is the market more efficient now or less efficient? If I'm trading on Betfair, what can I expect? Is the market harder or easier? And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Please like and comment on the video below. That will allow me to produce better quality videos and more of them in the future. If you're interested in learning to trade successfully on sports, then why not visit the Bet Angel Academy where we have more detailed videos. So, if you ask me, are the markets more efficient nowadays? Um, I can say to you yes and no, because uh, curiously, the markets um, have evolved, as you'd expect over time, um, but that evolution very often reaches a fork in the road where they take divergent paths. And we have this curious situation, uh, particularly in the racing market at the moment, but also, you know, it's, it's appearing elsewhere in other markets where the market's more efficient than it's ever been, but simultaneously less efficient. And it's going to take a bit of explaining um, to uh, talk you through exactly uh, why that is the case. Now, it's not a theory. Um, it's not a thought. Uh, it's a fact. I've studied it and analysed it because one of the important things for me is uh, one of the reasons I've been around for so long is if you come to a market and you deploy a strategy, that strategy may work. You may just fluke it. You may find something that works for you or you are able to work with. And, and you know, that's great. But the problem is the market does shift and change over time. So I don't know how many uh, full time professional traders in inverted commas. Um, I've met or seen over the years who've come, done well for a short period of time, they lose their edge and then they vanish. Uh, so it's always been really important to me, not only do I have a strategy, but I can actively describe it because that allows me to understand what's going on in the market and if the market shifts slightly, then I'll adjust the strategy. I had this last week with um, Greyhounds, or maybe two weeks ago. Uh, the strategy I was using on that, it just suddenly seemed to be much more negative. So because I had researched and understood how the strategy worked, I just tweaked it um, and then turned it around back in the other direction. So somebody, something responded to me being in the market, so I responded to them. And the game of cat and mouse continues. And that's what you tend to find over a long period of time. That is the process that continues. So to shortcut the video for people who just want to turn up, watch the video for two minutes and go away with a bit of information, uh, the market is and isn't if, uh, more efficient. If, if that makes sense. Basically what's happened over a long period of time is the book over round has shrunk dramatically to a very, very small percentage, but the volatility in the market has increased. So if that's the information that you're looking for on this video, there it is. But if you want a full explanation, that's what I'm going to do next. So there are two key components to what I'm seeing in the market. Um, you know, you expect the market to progress over time. So as I just mentioned uh, in the previous comment, um, I see something shift in the market, so I shift my strategy to account for that. So when that happens, somebody may shift somewhere else and then you shift again. The best example I can give you of this, or the best analogy, is say you're at a, a, a concert and you want to have a good look at the stage. If you stand up on your toes, then the person behind you has to stand up on their toes. And so eventually it ripples all the way back um, and the effect is sort of nullified to some extent because nobody particularly gets an advantage. So behaviour is dictated by the person at the front of the stage. Now the person at the front of the stage in most of these situations isn't the intermediary. So if Betfair tweaks something um, to do with the system, and they have tweaked a lot over the many years, nobody's ever really done a video or a blog post and explained it, but where the exchange is now compared to where it was many, many years ago is completely different. So stuff you used to be able to do then, you definitely can't do now. But when you start looking and mourning the loss of opportunities, think back to when I started. Um, there was nobody in the market, so it was a bit like uh, uh, running naked across an open field. You know, uh, you felt a certain sense of freedom uh, with the early markets, and there seemed to be uh, plenty of fruit to eat everywhere. But um, the problem is, uh, the I was going to say, there isn't plenty of fruit because basically you roam across this field. And there isn't much fruit, but the fruit is very easy to get. You're, you're getting the low hanging fruit. It's very, you know, you roam across the field um, and you find a tree, you pick off the fruit and it's lovely and juicy and, you know, but you, there just aren't many of them. Because, of course, if you eat all of the fruit, then no more trees grow. So, you know, you eat some fruit and you plant the seeds for others. 
and um, and then sure enough more trees grow but as more trees grow and your little patch of land becomes more fertile then um, the competition increases and then suddenly it's not possible to get all of the low-hanging fruit because there are so many people looking for the low-hanging fruit so you have to climb up a bit and get other fruit uh, and that's how the market evolved so when I turned up on Betfair all those years ago there were plenty of opportunities but no money now there's much more money um, and many more opportunities but it's a bit more competitive to get hold of that money. However, uh, if you look at the video that I did, which I will append to this video, about um, half a trillion in numbers, this was explaining to you all of the big markets that you see on Betfair. And what's happened over time is you tend to find yourself going into a niche and then exploiting that niche particularly well. Um, so yeah, you know, there's enormous amounts of money now, billions and billions and billions of pounds flowing through the sports markets. And you're not concerned with like being master of all the field that you purvey. Uh, you just want a little bit um, of that activity. And you may have a particular tree that you like and the fruit is good and you know where to find it and, and, and so on. So yeah, you know, the opportunities change. Very easy, um, but no money around in, in the very, very old days. Uh, a bit harder now, but uh, not within particular niches. And there's an, an enormous amount of money there. Uh, but the enormous amount of money does bring competition. But as I've explained in other videos, there are many ways to get an edge within the market. But the interesting thing about that growth in the amount of money is it's and that competition is it's brought the book over round down. So the book over round used to be at 105, 110% when I first started looking at the markets, and it's shrunk to pretty much 100% now. So if you don't know what the book over round is, the book over round is basically the sum of all of the odds that you see on the screen. So say we have a two runner market and both runners are placed at odds of two, what does that mean? That is a 100% book. So the book over round basically is the uh, implied probability behind those odds. So if we have odds of two and we do one divided by two, that equals 0 0.5. So that 0 0.5 is saying to us that there's a 50% chance that that particular selection will go on to win that event. So if we have a two runner market with two runners at odds of two, then you add up those two and that equals 100%. 100% is the overround. That's the chance that any one of those two selections has of going on to win that particular event. So with two runners at two, it's 100%. There's 100% chance that one of those two runners will go on, or one of those two selections will go on to win that particular event, whatever that event may be. It could be a tennis match, it could be a snooker match, it could be a horse race, it could be anything. Um, so the book over round, you will actually see, if you go onto Bet Angel and you look at the book over round, you'll see the one click screen and there's a percentage number at the top. That's the book over round. It's available on the ladder, it's available on um, the Bet Fair website, right? It, it used to be, I don't know if it has because I haven't looked recently, but uh, most websites, most exchanges do have the book over round. If you go to a bookmaker during the Grand National, they will quote you a 150% book. So when you put money down with them, you're going to lose 50% of it straight away. If you look at the exchange nowadays, though, you can get a super competitive 28 runner handicap at Ascot and the book over round will be virtually zero. It will be at around 100%. If the book over round is at 5%, then you have a theoretical 5% loss over the long term, 10% and so on. So at zero, um, at 100%, there is a zero margin to the other side of the book. So yeah, what's happened over many years is the overround percentage has come down and come down. And what, the reason that that has happened is the overround shrinks as prices get more competitive. So if you have a, somebody in the book at 16 and you go into the market and offer 16 and a half, that knocks a small percentage off of the overround. And if somebody's offering at two and you go in and push their price out and offer at 202, the overround shrinks again. So over many, many years, the overround has gone from a very high number to a much, much smaller one. So the market is fantastically priced now. Now, of course, there's commission to take account of, but if you Dutch more than one runner, um, then the commission becomes less of an issue. I'm going to have to explain in another video if you want me to comment below. But the, um, the basically, if in an efficient market with the overrun near 100%, if you back more than one runner, in other words, you use Dutching, um, then the commission calculation works out a little bit differently. But fundamentally speaking, when you back or lay at around 100%, then you're getting fantastic value for money. And this is where exchanges beat bookmakers hands down, because that over round is very, very tiny. Um, there are other complications with the calculated commission, and again, I won't go into it, but if you, if you think that you're paying 5% commission, 
um, you're probably paying much less. Um, but it all depends on your strike rate and the strategy that you use. Again, if you're interested in that, comment and I will elaborate for you. So yeah, the overround has shrunk over time. And the reason the overround has shrunk is because um, the number, the amount of odds, the, comp the competition for offering better odds has got bigger and bigger. So you can bet into a near 100% book. So I have an automated dutching strategy. It just runs across the market. It looks for suitable characteristics within the market, and then it places a bet on several different runners. But, and this is where Bet Angel is really useful, it only does that if the book over round is 100% or less. Now, because of cross matching, it generally isn't less than 100%, but it's trying to uh, time its betting into the market when the market is at absolute most efficient. And that works really well for me over a long period of time. Um, because what I'm saying is before commission, my bet is really not going to lose much money to the other side of the book. Now, if you look at the over round, um, on one side you've got the back over round and on the other side you've got the layover round. And the difference between the two is the spread between the two prices that you see up and down the book. So it's the margin you lose to the backers or the margin you lose to the layer. But of course you can pitch your position into the market when, if, if you're using automation or a servant, uh, when the book is only at 100%, which gives you certain levels of guarantees over the very long term. So yeah, the overround has shrunk. The market is getting more and more efficient. Um, uh, but the amount of margin that is being lost to the other side of the book, basically, is what this means. It's very, very small. So if you're on the other side of the book trying to make margin, you're probably making much less margin than you ever have um, in your entire betting exchange career because the overrounds now are absolutely tiny. But it's great for people on the other side of the book. So I didn't think a few years ago I'd be pursuing betting strategies, but the overround's so tiny and the, and the market's so efficient that that is actually pretty viable for me. Um, so yeah, you know, you can you, the, the chance of squeezing a profit out of betting strategies is much higher than it has ever been. But the funny thing about it is, while the overround is coming down and getting smaller and smaller, volatility is going in the other direction. So if you go back 10 years ago, you could stick a tenner on a football team, go out, walk the dog, um, have some tea, um, have a shower, uh, fix the back door, come back, and you know probably the price would be exactly the same as it is now. But the market is much more twitchy than it ever has been. And as a consequence, the average traded range, uh, which used to be here, um, is much bigger now. I, I could quantify the exact numbers for you, but I'm not going to do that in the video because that would be dull and boring. But what, the most important thing to realize is that the average traded range on most sports is getting bigger. And in particular, this is happening on racing quite a lot as well. So you tend to find that um, when you're looking at uh, certain types of races, they're much more likely to move much further than they ever did. But if you think about it, this is, this is unusual, this is odd because you can back at very, very competitive prices now and the overround is absolutely tiny, but the average range that they're trading at is pretty huge. So if you think about it logically, the average range is here and you manage to get your back order in at the top end of that range, which is where trading sort of comes in, but this also applies to betting strategies, then you can um, get really, really good value because then the price sort of sinks back in the other direction. But because you got it at such a, a large price, you're gonna benefit from that. Um, but it works the other way as well. You know, you can lay at lower prices at the bottom end of that traded range, and it's just that average traded range that is getting a little bit bigger. Now, I can't specifically uh, explain why that is. Uh, maybe it's just more traders in the market. Maybe it's the way that Betfair have changed the um, exchange and the way the bet matching process works on the exchange. Maybe that's encouraging that increase in volatility. But it's funny because a market that has a traded range like this, where you know that the average price is here, um, it isn't particularly efficient. However, if you look at the book over round, that's collapsed to very small values. So the market is efficient. So you have this strange dichotomy where the market is actually super efficient from a bookmaking perspective and offers very, very competitive prices, but those prices are more volatile than they've ever been. And so the range of prices that you can choose is quite wide. But from a betting and trading perspective, the interesting thing is that small book percentage and the large volatility actually gives you the opportunity of getting value prices much more than you ever have uh, done so in the past. Whereas when you wind back to the very start of the market, the book percentage was very high, so the edge against you was quite large, and the average traded range was low. So you really found it difficult to get something on um, at a suitable price. But now, I actually think that the opportunity um, is pretty wide uh, for you to be able to do that. And in fact, it's brought 
um, betting strategies to the fore in terms of being able to find some value from there. Because very often you see the price on things just fly off all over the place and you're just sort of thinking, well, what happened there? That makes no sense. Um, and you'll often see me saying this on, on the blog. I'll just sort of say, this has been backed too far. Now, I'm saying that from a, um, from, a, from, a, from a double perspective because from a trading perspective, it probably isn't going to go any further. But also, and if it does go further, it's probably a value lay. And the same if something drifts. You know, you, you've probably got an opportunity from there. So yeah, strange dichotomy, but this is sort of where we've ended up after a number of years. The market's more efficient, but less efficient at exactly the same time. Um, it's an oddity within the market, but it's a fact. The book overround is smaller than it's ever been, but volatility is much higher.